Hello, my name is Abdel Dusseroy. Today I'm gonna explain for you how I'm gonna share a tutorial, I mean, about how to install Intellis GX. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do today is just uh, download um, the uh, SGX SDK and then run it like a normal application. Uh, we're gonna just run it, uh, I mean SGX application, I'm gonna just run it in uh, simulation mode. So we're gonna target uh, the hardware mode. So hardware required like further setups, uh, like make sure that you have Intel processor set generations, uh, it support uh, Intel SDK, you need to download drivers and all the other stuff. But for the today, day, uh, we're gonna target the simulation mode so you can run it in any kind of a processor, uh, doesn't matter whether it's Intel or not. Um, and uh, it doesn't necessarily like to have that version or in that device, your device support uh, Intel SGX. So let's get started. Uh, so first thing is you need to download the SDK from uh, Intel website. Okay, so I'm gonna put the link in the description so you can just follow it from there. Uh, so I already copied the link. So you just go to their website, uh, you find the download button, you just click on it and then it will ask you like what kind of version you want from the drop down menu. You just choose one version, you can choose the latest one, and then you select download. So then you will have like uh, multiple of stuff, stuff like uh, drivers, uh, SDK. So we only consider about the SDK. So it should have like .bin as extension, like .bin. So I'm gonna download it here. So, but first I'm gonna just create some play, uh, like a directory for our mode place. So let's make directory and call it until SGX. Um, There we go. Okay, so we're gonna cd to that directory. So we are here, our directory is empty so far. So we're gonna download uh, that binary from their website. And then it's gonna take a while. Here we go. So we got that binary. So you can see that the binary have dot pen extension, so we need to install it. So first, before we run it, we need to make it executable. So the easiest way is to use chmod, uh, a plus X, and then we will give it to SGX. So you can see now its color become green. I mean, it's back on your screen. Uh, but at the end, this is executable. You can see X, X, X here. So it's now executable. So let's execute it. So here I'm going to ask you, like, which directory you want to set that from. Uh, I mean, which directory you wanted to set this. Uh, I mean, normally people use uh, slash opt, okay? Uh, Intel slash opt slash Intel, uh, but you can just do it, like install it in your directory. So I'm gonna just install it here. So let's click yes. Okay, you're good to go. So we install it there. Uh, and uh, here, like a few instructions, you can just read them a bit. Okay, but make sure, like, whenever you want to run something, you need at least to do source to the environment. Okay, so the source to the environment is. Uh, uh, an easy instruction, okay, so you can find it here, like easy command, you can just copy it and then run it. So whenever you make a session, like whenever you log into your machine and you want to start doing some stuff on Intel GX, make sure to source to this environment. Of course, like if you have different SDK installed in the same machine, you can source environment for each one of these SDK you already installed. So you can have like multiple fonts in a different directories, okay? But for this one, I mean, this is like the path for the environment. So I'm gonna show you where the environment is so you can source to it. So I'm gonna clear the screen here. Um, so we got like SGX directory. We go and go through it. And then we got this the environment things. Okay, so you can just do source environment, okay, which is already already done. So we don't have to do it again. I mean, if you do it again, there's no problem with that. Okay, but whenever you want to do something with SGX to do the environment, uh, like you work on SGX, you source the environment. So you don't have to do it like every time um, you run an application, but at least one per session. So one when you start up and then that's it. Okay, uh, so next we're gonna access some sample code. So you already have a directory called sample code. So let's go see sample code. Here we go. Uh, so there's a plenty of examples we can look at them. Okay, so the station, um, sample enclave, and the others. So let's look at the simple enclave, which is like, which seems like the simplest one between all. Um, sorry, sample enclave. So here we go. So in the directory we got like. Too much uh, like a few more files okay so we got the app we got the enclave and we got the make file so the app is represent uh, the host application which is something not secure 
Okay, you can put your code, uh, user input, like something like read from the user uh, and print to the user. The enclave represents for the secure code. So you do the encryption and all that stuff here. So let's look here using nano. So app, app.cpp. So this is in C. So you can see here, like this is the file where you have like your main program here. Uh, so this is essentially the main program. You can see there's arguments here. And it's somehow trying to initialize the enclave to make it run here. Okay, and if everything goes well, just to print uh, some message and then get char and then that's it. Okay, um, so this is like the, basically how it's work. Okay. Okay, uh, so let's close that one. So we can also look for the enclave code. So you go enclave enclave.cpp so this is the enclave code i mean it doesn't seem like doing much this is just a print for an all call so normally enclave doesn't support input and output so you cannot read from the user inside the enclave functions or like output from the user so you should have some sort of uh, wrap up uh, so this is like a wrap up function for a printing okay this is like an e call which is call another all call on the main function. So we're going to go into e call and all call more deeply later. But so far, this is like a small printf function inside the enclave. OK, so uh, now we wanted to make it run. So since we said that we wanted to run it in the uh, run it in the simulation mode. OK, so we can look at the make file, and see how it's actually uh, work. OK, so there is a, like a lot of instruction here and it's mentioned like where the SDK installed, um, like too much stuff here. Okay, you can just follow it. Okay, uh, and you can see here that the SDK is already in opt intel. Let's check SDK. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so let me just clear that one. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just try to see how like we can compile this program uh so we have this instruction we can use it so we're using make and we're writing here like sgmos is similar. so depend on the configuration of the make file so this doesn't work always but at least for the sample you can just specify what kind of mood you want and then you put a simulator Okay, so that's it. Okay, so it's already compiled. Let's clear that one. So you can see here, this is like the executable application, which is the host application. And this is like the enclave binary, okay, which is an SO file. Okay, so to run it, you just have dot app. So we get to go, like enclave has been created and returned fine. Just hit enter, and then that's it. Okay, so this is just a thermal application. So if you got that message, that means like everything works fine. Your uh, setup is fine, uh, and like enclave is working fine. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, you can look farther, okay, on how this is actually coding, but this is like for only for the setup. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.